Hi, welcome back to 19th and 20th Century Philosophy. I'm Matt Brown. Today we're talking about Susan Stebbing, a key figure in the history of analytic philosophy. She played a really important role in facilitating dialogue between the British philosophers known as the Cambridge Analysts and the Austrian and German logical positivists or logical empiricists, like Rudolf Carnap, who we talked about last time. Stebbing helped craft uh, uh, between these two movements a kind of shared identity of analytic philosophy um, and in ways that I'll talk about in a moment. Stebbing was born in 1885 in London and died in 1943. She was the first woman to earn a position of full professor of philosophy in the United Kingdom uh, at Bedford College. Stebbing was heavily influenced by especially G.E. Moore, but also Bertrand Russell and Ludwig Wittgenstein. Um, she helped introduce these uh, early British analytic philosophers to the logical positivists between the wars, um, facilitating visits of philosophers like Moritz Schlick and uh, Rudolf Carnap. Uh, she was a co-founder of the journal Analysis, which is still an important journal of analytic philosophy today. Stebbing also in many ways anticipated the post-World War II movement of Oxford ordinary language philosophy, uh, another important development in the history of analytic philosophy. Um, and she often in her work emphasized the, 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 the wisdom and the adequacy uh, inherent in our everyday language for dealing at least with ordinary experience. Her first major work, um, which earned her a lot of acclaim, was uh, A Modern Introduction to Logic, published in 1930, revised in 1933. It was not simply a textbook in formal logic. It also included discussions of uh, the older Aristotelian logic, um, topics in the history of logic, uh, discussion of scientific method, and a variety of topics concerning linguistic analysis. In a sense, it's really more like the first textbook in analytic philosophy, more so than it is like contemporary introductions to modern formal logic. Stebbing's work uh, throughout her career increasingly turned to popular and socially relevant uh, uses of analytic philosophy. Another major work pictured here uh, is uh, Her Thinking to Some Purpose, published in 1939, um, a fairly practical, um, public-facing book on critical thinking. Here, Stebbing focuses on the critical analysis of persuasive rhetoric, breaking down things like political speeches, showing how they mislead their audiences, and, and, and really helping people to think about um, uh, how not to um, let persuasive speech sort of bias them or, or, or take advantage of them. Um, so really important work. Um, an important essay for understanding Stebbins' contributions to the method of analytic philosophy, and our, our main topic of discussion today, is this work, The Method of Analysis in Metaphysics. Um, she says here from the very beginning that uh, she wishes to make clear that in her opinion, metaphysics is, is a distinctive branch of philosophy. Um, so not here a term of abuse like it is for Carnap and some of the logical positivists, um, not something to be overcome, as both Heidegger and uh, Carnap thought, but just a, a branch of philosophy, one kind of topic that philosophers undertake. What is metaphysics? According to Stebbing, metaphysics is a systematic study concerned to show what is the structure of the facts in the world to which reference is made with varying degrees of indirectness whenever a true statement is made. There's a number of different contrasts in the essay. One contrast she brings up is to a traditional philosopher named McTag McTaggart, who describes metaphysics as the systematic study of the ultimate nature of reality. And uh, uh, Stebbing tells us that the method there is to posit sort of fundamental principles of ultimate reality and then derive mundane facts or facts about the uh, apparent reality from them by, by deduction. And she'll tell us again and again that she thinks this is the wrong method for metaphysics to proceed by. Um, so if we, if we turn to a passage on page 70, um, uh, Stebbing says this. 
sort of elaborating on her account of what metaphysics is, she says the business, business of metaphysics is to show, one, what exactly we are believing when we believe that there is a table in this room, that it was here three hours ago, and so on, how our various beliefs are interrelated, and how our inconsistent beliefs may be adjusted, and which should be rejected. Thus, metaphysics aims at making precise the reference of all true beliefs. Um, and remember Frege, when you see that word reference, it's the same, same concept. For this purpose, analysis is indispensable. So there's this core concept, it's there in the title of the essay, and it's here in this explanation of what metaphysics is doing, um, is this notion of analysis, um, which again, the kind of metaphysical analysis she's talking about, she takes at great, she's sort of at great pains to distinguish from this, this uh, project of constructing a, a postulational system, as she says. So we should then ask, okay, what for Stebbing is analysis? And she describes, I think, three different approaches. There's the one already mentioned, uh, which she sometimes calls postu the postulational method, or sometimes calls symbolic analysis. And this is what the sort of bad old traditional metaphysics does. It postulates some principles of ultimate reality, um, you know, you can imagine Thales, everything is made of water, or um, the uh, idealists, um, ultimate reality is, is our ideas, um, uh, and then you deduce the consequences of those metaphysical claims, those metaphysical principles, and then you try to either recover or uh, dismiss uh, the appearances, the sort of mundane facts that we believe. A second form of analysis which she talks about is uh, what we might, what she calls grammatical analysis. Um, elsewhere, might, you might consider calling logical analysis. This is concerned with reformulating statements from ambiguous or vague ordinary language into more unambiguous, more logically clear forms. Um, and so, so the concepts kind of stay on the same level um, but uh, it becomes more clear. Um, and then uh, what she calls metaphysical analysis. Metaphysical analysis decomposes complex facts into more and more, uh, as she says, basic facts that ground the meaning or truth of the mundane facts. So let's consider an example. Um, this is the example from, from uh, Stebbing's paper. Economists are fallible, right? So um, this, is a, this is predicating a, a, a certain property of being fallible, which means that they could be wrong, right? Uh, they have, uh, you know, they're not perfect, right, um, of economists. Now, if we're doing logical or grammatical analysis, we might be trying to just make this uh, a little more clear. So by we, when we say economists are, are fallible, what we're really doing is we're talking about uh, some, th some property that every economist has. So every economist is fallible is perhaps a somewhat clearer version of this, right? Um, and if we want to get even clearer, we might use the um, machinery of modern formal logic, like predicate logic, to express this, right? This says, for all x, uh, e if ex, then fx, right? Uh, so E might be a predicate that means economist, F might be a predicate that means fallible, and so this says in a more logically rigid way, uh, for all X, if X is an economist, then F, X is a fallible, right? Um, just another way of saying every economist is fallible. This is just the grammatical or logical kind of analysis, and so not what she's really trying to get at in this paper. The other kind of analysis she's concerned with is um, metaphysical analysis. Metaphysical analysis is also what she calls directional, right? Um, it moves from complexes to more basic or simple facts, right? So when we say economists are fallible or every economist is fallible, um, what it makes that true, presumably, um, is a more complex, is, is a more, um, is a statement that is um, more complex in one way, but also more simple in another way. It's a statement like well, Karl Marx is fallible, and John Maynard Keynes is fallible, and Muhammad Yunus is fallible, and Amartya Sen is fallible, and so on and so forth, right? 
Um, this takes the general abstract claim about every economist and actually points out that what, you know, what makes that true is facts about a bunch of particular persons, right, who happen to be economists. So it takes that, that term economists, which is a complex combination of things, right, um, and decomposes it into the persons that are collected together under that category, um, Marx and Keynes and Eunice and Sen and Friedman and so forth, right? Um, possibly this is not the last sort of stage of the analysis, right? So, um, you know, this is maybe this is maybe a resultant, but not the resultant in the kind of vocabulary of the essay. Um, presume possibly there's some further level of analysis where we um, take a complex like fallible and decompose it into the things that constitute fallibility. Or we take a term Karl Marx. If Karl Marx is not a simple or basic thing, right, um, then we can decompose Karl Marx perhaps into some social and psychological and biological facts, um, possibly even physical facts if that's the way the world works, right? Um, so this is, this is the form of metaphysical analysis um, that, that Stebbing is getting at. So I hope that gives you a, a quick sort of entree into Stebbing's um, approach and her way of thinking about metaphysics. Um, I think it's important to note that this is a very different approach than both Heidegger and Carnap, as I said before. Stebbing is, is definitely not against metaphysics, although she is, of course, against a traditional way of doing metaphysics, but not for the kind of um, Kantian sort of reasons that Heidegger and Carnap are worried about. She thinks there's no sort of, um, no real problem with metaphysics as a type of inquiry, as long as it is analytical in the way that she's talking about and not postulational. And maybe that actually does get at some of the th worries that Heidegger and Carnap have. It'd be worth talking about in uh, class or on Discord or in the comments of this video. Otherwise, I will uh, look forward to talking to you uh, and I will see you next time. Bye.